The most important thing for me with this new vehicle here, that I could match the beautiful Ascari blue with my polo shirt and my shoes even. That's one of my hobbies. And now the most important things for you, all the details about the Audi S3 facelift with Thomas Nautigefühl in 4K, full screen, full length. <laughs> Let's go here with the front. Completely new front styling here in the grille and also these lying L's here today in the bright styling. You could also get a black pack for the S3, but I feel it is more beautiful that way. Here, new Audi rings, more two-dimensional styling and also in this bright white design. LED, optional matrix LED is available. And for this one, you can get different daytime running light signatures. You can individualize on the interior. Three with the normal LED, four with the matrix LED. Side profile, this here is the S3 sedan. Both are available, hatchback and the sedan. The sedan here at 177 inches or four meters and 50. The hatchback would be four meters 35 or 171 inches. S3, 18 inch wheels or 19 inch. And this is a beautiful styling, reminds me of a 90s BBS styling, this spider style. New 18 inch brakes underneath, red brake calipers. I think it's so much more beautiful when you hear the bright contrast around the windows, also in the lower part and at the side mirrors. Or would you rather go for a blacked out design? Tell me in the comments. I think also the sedan so much, you know, brings so much more character to this vehicle. Some others prefer the hatch. Design wise, I definitely prefer the sedan. What do you think? And suspension wise, you either get a fixed sport suspension, 50 millimeters lower than the base model or the DCC. That's the adaptive suspension you get here with the S3 as well. Then it's also 50 millimeters lower in comparison to a standard model. And if you compare adaptive suspension standard model versus adaptive suspension here with the S3, the difference is five millimeters. Ah, beautiful palms in the background, isn't it? Here in our Oman location. Look at that here in the rear, optional sports exhaust by Akropovich Titanium. Then you have these four pipes here. That looks really cool and soon we'll also take a sound sample for you. Then new styling here with the lower bumper, also with these lying L's in that form. And then important technology change. The S3 now gets the torque split from the RS3. What does it mean? The all-wheel drive system usually works front plus rear on demand, maximum 50-50 distribution. And then on the rear axle, now with this torque split, one wheel can turn faster than the other one. And that is usually then the outside wheel when you go in a corner. So for example, I go into a left corner, then the right outside wheel turns faster than the inside wheel or gives gets more power actually. And then it kind of leans into the corner. That way you can even go to a dynamic plus mode that is new. Then also ESC is drawn back and you can do some, yeah, some kind of drifting action, although it is not a rear wheel based platform. Turning indicators in the front already with the cascading style, if you have the top matrix LED option. In the rear, you already get the cascading form here with the normal LED trim. That one is at least standard for the S3. Two liter four cylinder under the hood, now at 333 horsepower. That's 23 horsepower more than the pre facelift. 420 newton meters of torque, and the acceleration figure now is at 4.7 seconds before it was 4.8 seconds. Oh, here's also nice S or red signalizing the four cylinders. And yeah, still the gas struts, good to have them definitely. Key fob here with the touchable Audi logo, I think it's good. And also here with the S badge. By the way, the model naming is now always here at the B pillar. It says S3 TSI Quattro for the all-wheel drive. Yeah, a lot of uh, desert sand here <laughs> getting collected. Then, dog clothing sound. Oh, there we go. It's really solid, like that. Inside of the doors, soft touch in the top part somewhat. And then here also the nice door handle, which you actually control like this from the lower part this then here microfiber insert also with this you know with these micro holes there's so a pretty cool styling just the lower part is hard pick also there's no covering on the inside so no sound system you can get there now then the 
S entry badge here for the S3 as well as the S steering. Then you have perforations at the side with contrast stitching and you have new microfiber inserts here and also on the right side of the dashboard. My absolute favorite are the sport seats. In this case then also with microfiber inside, leatherette on the outside, so the seats are completely animal free. They look cool also here with the stamped in S logo. And at the same time, they not only look cool, they give you side support, but they also are good long term. So this is still compact size here, compact sedan, but you have a comfort like a level above. And that's what I really fancy. And here, steering wheel up and down in and out, manual control with a good size here still clicking sounds from these buttons, manual buttons, that's what I love. Also upgraded shifting levers here now. They were there before, but now they have, you know, this shiny top, so they look a little bit more upmarket. Headroom here without the panoramic roof with a 189 or six for two. Yeah, still some left. <laughs> it's always like, what is this? Like, walk, walk. <laughs> and Leah can show us now how far back the passenger seat goes. It's also very important when you have long legs, of course, as a passenger, that it goes far backwards. And thank you so much, Leah, for your filming today. Desert-like desert temperatures, and it's really, really hot. So thanks also for her effort. Please also thank her in the comments. Interior cockpit overview here with these very prominent air vents. Then soft touch here at the dashboard, new Dynamica microfiber inserts here, 10 inch infotainment system, I love clicking sounds for the real manual climate unit. Good to have that still. And instruments here, 12.3 inch, all digital. Shifting pedals are very well to use. Yeah, and I really like the setup that you have not too large a steering wheel and so on. Real touchable outer rings on the steering wheel. This is rather a classic setup for the cockpit, that, but that's why I really appreciate it. Now two USB-C chargers here in the front. Shifting lever is more integrated, even flatter than here. Seven speed dual clutch transmission. Adaptive cup holders, also quite solid. The middle armrest here, so it automatically slides forward when you put some pressure on it. I think it needs to be fixed a little bit more. Maybe it is in the US version. And then, however, it's well attached to the sides and some more space underneath. Infotainment system here with this classic view. So I think it's relatively easy to control indeed. Here in the lights and vision, there you can go to exterior writing, digital signatures, and then you can switch through the different signatures here. Four when you have the matrix LED, three if you would have the standard LED, which are standard for the S3. What else? Then here, the drive select, when you pick the drive select, there we go. Not only dynamic mode, but also dynamic plus is now available. Then you're already here. The engine is kind of like preloaded, more exhaust sound. But in general, here with the S3 now, with this facelift, there we go with the drive select. Once again, the you know the RPM is always a little bit higher than with the predecessor with the pre-facelift. So they tuned the engine overall in a sportier sense. You can always go also for individual settings, for example, even for the torque splitter. Rear doors also have nice microfiber insets here. Just the top part here is hard pack. And then the comfort is good, but then again, when a tall person is driving with these voluminous sport seats, the legs don't really fit with another tall person behind it. So there's not much space here in the A3 in the rear. However, headroom um, in the sedan, I hit the head on the ceiling when I lean backwards. If I you know, relax my spine, it's okay. But if I put my spine up, I do hit the seating with my head. However, the seating materials here in the rear and also with the stamped in or this, this quilting, quilted structure that is beautifully done, really gives you these small cushions. I love these details. That's why I'm also a car nerd. So styling wise and comfort is good, but the legroom is the main issue. If you want more headroom, by the way, the hatchback would be a little bit better than in the headroom in the rear. As for the trunk here, of course, with the sedan limited in height, but then you have a better length. But first of all, the width, yeah, about a meter or 40 inches. And then the length is also almost a meter or 40 inches, whereas the hatchback would empty at 80 centimeters or 31 inches. So this is like what you gain in length here in the sedan truck, but then again, lose something in height. You can, of course, also fold the seats, but for that, you have to actually go around and do it then from the rear like this. And this is an exclusive new color called Flaming 
mint camouflage. I'm just kidding, this is the camo paint here for the very first vehicle we were allowed to drive. The final one we have already just shown you. But yeah, this is just uh, another example of sometimes we get inquiries like, can I buy it as it stands here right here? Would you like to have this one in this very paint with these wheels here? Tell me in the comments. And this one we're now going to drive. And we can directly take a spin. Let's use the launch control. <laughs> Nope, that's 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour. Whew, super quick, especially with the launch control, but so controlled. Of course, then so much power is being sent to the rear axle. Maximum is then 50-50 distribution. Here for the launch control, the new torque split, of course, doesn't play a role, but it will now here in these corners. And I am in this new Dynamic Plus mode, and this Dynamic Plus mode makes it you know, even more power to the rear and also enhances this torque split mechanism that I can fully use it. Theoretically, up to 100% of the rear torque is sent to one wheel. And I mean, this is predominantly a front wheel based platform, you know, the whole base platform. But first of all, we have this all-wheel drive system. And now with the torque split, you hardly feel anymore that it is actually a front wheel bias because I hear, I feel now like the, the rear is coming a little bit around like it would be with a rear wheel based uh, all wheel drive vehicle, for example. Like if you have a rear wheel biased car, then you have an all wheel drive. So, really balanced in the handling. And now I accelerate out, and I feel you know this, this rear a little bit spinning around. It's not like it would be drifting instantaneously, especially when it's dry here, but here in this dynamic plus mode you actually have already a sport ESC. That means that the electronic stability program is already drawn back a little bit. Well, then let's put it to the test. You know, stay in the corner, outside. Really nice exit. Ooh, and directly over one kilometer now, 60 miles now, although we're going uphill here all the way. Now it's pushing a little bit over the front axle. Then on the outside, as soon as I'm on the throttle, it's fine again. So you really feel that, especially due to this technology, you need to use the throttle when exiting the corner and then you can make this vehicle here less front wheel biased. It's just that in that corner when I'm still on the gas, I'm still feeling it. So you have to adapt your driving, you know, a little bit to that, to the individual concept. So for example here, maybe I'm taking it a little bit tighter and then here on the outside, yeah, that's really beautiful. Wow, really cool. And May, you know some some viewers here who had actually the S3 or who bought it they you know we've been talking about the the base RPM so to speak and here they kind of put the base RPM a little bit higher so you're always a little bit better in higher RPMs or quicker in higher RPMs yes that means more consumption but at the same time it also means you know more instantaneous reaction from the engine Whew, it's really cool how it goes uphill also oh, camel <laughs> Have you seen that? There was like a warning sign on the camel and there was a camel on top of that. So that, yeah, like if someone would have faked a photo or something. So we will always watch out for the camels here on the side of the road, of course. You know, a little bit downhill. I love, by the way, the steering. So direct input, really crisp and precise. It is progressive. Now with this facelift, even more progressive. And you've maybe seen me going uphill. There was more camels? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Oh yeah, there's camels driven. Oh, there's a small one. Oh, is there a smaller one? Yeah. So now we have to slow down a little bit. So you're always... And a big get one. And a small small. one. Oh. <laughs> so now you get a little bit free camel entertainment. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there's a small one. Look at that. Oh, they're really beautiful. <laughs> so now we can also, um, for example, go back to the comfort mode, that the exhaust is also a little bit more silent. There we go. Oh. Look at that, how cute. So they're probably also not too keen on hearing the very loud exhaust note. So then you can go back to the comfort mode. We are also equipped with the DCC here now, the adaptive suspension. In the comfort mode, we have then more comfort dampening. It's good, for example, also when the road is a little bit more destroyed. And when you're freeway and you're not dis uh, disturbing any animals, then you can, for example, go to the dynamic mode. Or once again, in dynamic plus, if you want the 
drawn back ESC, for example, and then you can play a little bit more with the vehicle. One more time, acceleration from standstill, but out of the corner. That's always a good test to see what is the steering doing, you know, while hardly accelerating out of the corner, how controlled the vehicle is actually. Let's go. Look at that. Drop and 100 again. Super smooth. You see the steering wheel did not get out of control at all. Good distribution of power and once again also I didn't feel any understeering, especially now when accelerating out of the standstill because when you think about it, you would have just a front wheel powered car or even front wheel platform with some all-wheel drive. You may be then you know going into understeering, you're being directed a little bit, but here that doesn't happen at all, at least then here from standstill out of the corner. So really cool. Then you might ask yourself if you consider buying an S3 or an RS3 next to the obvious price difference. Here now with the torque split in the rear, does it still make sense to go for an RS3? Price performance wise, of course not. And yes, with that facelift that has been even stronger that argument. However, you feel that the RS3 still gives you more power and more punch, especially when you have situations like you're going uphill, you stop in between a little bit, then you want to get going again. There, this additional cylinder, additional power, just gives you a little bit more and like easiness. Here, as long as you keep it in higher RPMs or in lower gears, for example, also with these shifting pedals that have been upgraded a little bit with this shiny element in here, this is all fine. Here, shift down yourself, for example, hit it, and you're absolutely fine. But if you sometimes get into a situation, you may be a gear too high or something, you're not in the dynamic plus mode, then you feel you are lacking power in comparison to an RS3, where it's just easier also from a low RPM perspective. So that is then the main aspect. And of course, that the S3 gives you a little bit more everyday driving life comfort. So it's the better compromise, whereas the RS3 is of course the more extreme choice and then also the more expensive choice and yeah we not only have some camel viewing here for you today also some cows passing the roads here and yeah as we know here always <coughs> taking care comfort mode silence and we make freeway <laughs> <laughs> there we go i really have to say i would take this vehicle exactly as it stands right here ascari blue on the outside then the bright accentuations with the bright audio rings also with the bright wheels the bright frames around and then also with the microfiber seats this is to me the perfect combination not only for an s3 but i would take any audi sedan actually in this very styling combination i just love it if the facelift is really necessary as for the changed exterior interior I think you will very well live with the pre-facelift there. Crucial indeed, the torque split here at the rear that now comes for the S3. Before that was only unique to the RS3. So now the question is, yeah, the RS3 you would go for when you want the five cylinder and even more power. But here, of course, this is the way better price performance ratio than if you compare it to the RS3, which you can also check out right now. Or if you're interested in that one, but rather than go subtle, normal A3 facelift, we also have a video of that.